My name is Simon Olatuji. I am your host at the Hope Television Streamcast Live. I'm coming to you live today. Today, Tuesday, the 31st of October 2017. I want to share with you, gentlemen and ladies, on marks of wisdom. Marks of wisdom. God has highly blessed us significantly and tremendously on this platform. Every time I come your way, I know that God brings living word, word of truth. Testimonies abound all over the world. Telephone conversation, chats through WhatsApp, chats through Messenger, through Instagram, Snapchat, people who have been communicating and testifying about the goodness of the Lord. And I tell you, people of God, you are in for another time of big blessing, marks of true wisdom. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 15, the Bible tells us about one small city and a great king coming against that city. But the Bible tells us about the wisdom of a poor man who by his wisdom delivered the city. Now, wisdom is deliverance. Those who find wisdom have found deliverance for themselves. Wisdom is a cover. When you are a wise man, you shape a future for you and your children. You shape a future for your generation forever. Wisdom is a principal thing. That is why the Bible says, in all your gettings, get wisdom and understanding. When you see a man of wisdom, you see a man marked for relevance. When you see a man of wisdom, now I tell you, show me a man of wisdom. Then I will tell you, you have seen a man cut out for excellence. You have seen a man that will not stand be before me, man. You have seen a man that will stand before kings. Now, marks of wisdom. People of God, I want to share with you seven powerful marks of wisdom. Number one, trust in God. There is no one who could be said to be wise who do not know God, who do not love him. Nobody. As a matter of fact, the Bible prescribes to us the mark of foolishness. It is a foolish man who says there is no God. There is no wise man there is no man of wisdom. Man that perceives understanding. Man that has discretion. Man that can be trusted with sound world and mind. Who despise the place of God. No. No one. In the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse number 10. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. In other words... He who could be said to be wise is the man who has knowledge of the Holy One. Knowledge of great God. The God of heaven and earth. The Bible just helps us to come into time with wisdom. Wisdom that comes from God. Wisdom that could be said to be pure and holy. So now, no man on earth could be said to be a man of wisdom, man of understanding, who do not know God. To know God is to find the truth about him. To know God is to believe his word. To know God is to cling to the authority of scripture that tells us the character of God in the world. So, gentlemen and ladies, I want to put this to you. Are you a man of understanding? When Paul the Apostle was talking to the Corinthians, he said, Where is the worldly wise? Where is the philosophers of this world? But the philosophy of this world has come to foolishness. But God has made the foolish things of earth wise unto himself. So now, people who seek God's word, people who thirst after God, they are those that could be regarded as wise. And I want to read this scripture to you, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path the pathway to knowledge the pathway to wisdom is when you seek god when you pursue him when you pursue the will and the will of god for your life you are regarded as wise and here are some other qualities that reveal people who who trust in god people who trust in god who struggle to trust in god who labor to trust in god who apply their heart to trust in God, and that is uh, the, the people who read the word of God, people who apply their heart to Him. Number two, number two, mark of true wisdom is when you walk in healthy relationship. Show me your friends, and I will tell you who you are very quickly. You are a result of your company. Oh, you say you are a quiet type. Oh, you say you love the Lord. But your company are lousy men. People who preoccupy themselves and engage themselves in reducing and traducing other men. People who run their mouth to run other people down. People who will do everything to destroy good things. If those are your company, then I tell you, you are on your way down. Mark of true wisdom is someone who loves God, who trusts in him, and then who works in healthy relationship. Now, when Jehoshaphat brought himself into an unholy alliance with Ahab, he was risking his destiny. He was to die, but for the mercy of God. Now, if you find yourself in any unholy, ungodly relationship that is not healthy, he's not going to help your future. Call it off. God cares about our friendship. God cares about who we are. God cares about who we relate with. God cares about our friends. Our friends matter to him. So, number three, the third mark of wisdom is seek good counsel. Seek good counsel. When you seek good counsel, you grow in wisdom. Now, you know, the word of God says that, that for learning there is no end. Anyone who thinks he knows is a fool enough. You think you have attained to the end of wisdom. You think nobody is wiser than you. You think you don't need nothing. You think you don't need to learn. You think you have stopped growing. The day you think like that, you have slipped into folly. You must seek good counsel. You must pursue the counsel of the Lord. David said, your word have I hid in my heart. The word of God is a source of good counsel. So now, three marks of Wisdom, number one, you must trust in the Lord. You must believe that God is and that is the reward of them who diligently seek him. Number two, you must walk in healthy relationship. You must realize that your friendship matters to God. Who you walk with matters to God. In the philosophy of the people of this world, they say, show me your friend and I will tell you who you are. Now, number three, seek good counsel. Pursue cancer with all your heart. When you have a problem, who you turn to for help matters. When you go to people whose life is already thwarted, people who do not know hence how to make an end of matter, people who are confused themselves, they run Esther scatter, they don't know the true source of life. If those are the people you go to, you will fall with them. You will go down with them. Men who have future, go with people who have future. If you are going far in life, you don't travel with people who are not going far. If you are going to Oklahoma, and there is a boss that is heading straight to Oklahoma, there are people, there is a bunch of men going straight to Oklahoma. Those are the people you want to go with. But if you see people who are going to Arlington, Grand Prairie, Dallas, and then their boss will be stopping by along the way and stopping people. If you journey with those kind of people, you will not arrive. And if you do, you will not arrive on time. But people you go with, they will have arrived. 
The person going to Grand Perry will have arrived. The person going to Arlington will have arrived. The person going to Dallas will have arrived. So if you are going far in life, you do not journey with people who are not going far. Mark it. Mark it. It's foolishness to journey with people who are not going to the distance you are going in life. That is wisdom. Mark of wisdom number one, trust in God. Number two, walk in a healthy relationship. Number three, seek good counsel. The counsel you seek has to do with people you go with. And number three, speak carefully. Watch your word. Guard your tongue. Guard your tongue. When God revealed the future to Joseph, what Joseph was going to be, he was so flippant about his life, about his destiny. He was so careless about the future. He started, you know, babbling and rantling about it. He was boasting and bragging before his people. He had let out everything that God revealed to him. He called his father and his mother and said, sit down, I have a redo. All of you, you will bow down to me. It took God mercy for Joseph to still be who he wants it to be. Mark of wisdom is to speak carefully. Guard your tongue. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5, the Bible says that when you come even to the presence of God, you should be careful what you say. Do not be in a hurry to talk. Nehemiah was a godly example. When God revealed the burden of the falling wall of Jerusalem to Nehemiah and challenged him to build, Nehemiah said, I did not utter a word about these things. He said, I kept it in my heart. Not even any man that was with me. Not even any man except the donkey that I rode knew that matter which God has revealed to me. Mary was another lively example.